Welcome to Katie's Insight, where I give my insight on all kinds of things, including news, business, finance, politics, current events, and most importantly right now, stimulus. And if you've seen my videos today, we have a lot of stimulus stuff to talk about, and we have what I think is some very good news. We have a new extended timeline for what we're doing with stimulus, which, trust me, this is very good news. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. As you guys know, we've had lots and lots of movement going on over the last week or so. It started with the Treasury, my boy Mnuchin. He asked back for money from the Fed. He asked back for, I think it was $450 billion from the Fed to repurpose to the Congress to do another stimulus bill. That finally made evil old Mitch McConnell, he perked up and he went, hey, I smell money. Let's go after it. So finally, after months and months and almost a year of doing this many negotiations behind closed doors with the Democrats when the White House had to pick up his slack, he finally said, I'm in, and the Democrats got real quiet for a while. However, thankfully, we have the group, the Problem Solvers Caucus. They stepped up, they put out their bill, as we know, for $908 billion, and now everybody is biting. Well, I say everybody. We finally have Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer behind it. Remember, not going to piecemeal anything a deal, Nancy Pelosi. Going to make it $3.4 trillion, and we're not going to make the American people suffer, and we're not going to sell them out. Remember her? Yeah, she's behind it. I guess... All of that doesn't matter now that she thinks the person that she wants to go into office is going to go into office because it was all just a negotiation game for the election, guys. That's all we are to them. It's just pawns and little political power and they don't care if we starve or we struggle. So Nancy Pelosi's on board and so are the Democrats. Now the Republicans, we have Mitch McConnell. He's trying to pass a $500 billion bill. It won't go anywhere. This is his third or fourth bill he's trying to pass. <clears throat> they don't go anywhere. Nobody wants his stupid bills. <laughs> They just don't. But this is a good one. And we have some information. I have some inside information today that's unheard of about what we're getting from this. Some really good things that are actually coming on the pipeline and some new information on timelines. So let's go ahead. Let's get into this. You know what time it is. It's time to pull up the information and see what the flip is going on. From foxnews.com, it says GOP senator, bipartisan virus bill extends eviction protection, leaves out direct payments. Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy said he's hopeful that Trump and McConnell will sign off on the bill. Here we go. The bipartisan virus relief bill extends a moratorium on evictions for people who can't pay their rent, but it doesn't include a federal stimulus check. Senator Bill Cassidy from Louisiana said Sunday. Cassidy, one of the 10 senators drafting the proposed package, said he hopes that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell from Kentucky and President Trump will sign off on it. While final language is expected to be hammered out earlier this week, one item that will not be included in a second round of direct payments to Americans is stimulus checks. It may be a go, but it's not in this bill, Cassidy told Fox News Sunday. The roughly $900 billion proposal being pushed by the senators, including Joe Manchin from West Virginia, Susan Collins from Maine, Lisa, I'm not going to go into all of them, just a few of them, but it says, they represent a compromise between the $500 billion package backed by McConnell and the $2.2 trillion plan sought by the Democrats. It's really 3.4, but when they narrowed it down, they're like, well, we're just going to, you know, shorten the time frame, which kind of seems like cheating to me, but whatever, it's Democrats. <laughs> by the way, when I say Democrats, I'm not talking about you fine people. I'm talking about the crazies at the top. The Republicans are evil, but at least they're outwardly evil. Sometimes they're manipulative, but they're outwardly evil. The Democrats are evil, but they're manipulative about it. I'd rather take the outward than manipulative. That's just me. So it says, this one is interesting, we're gonna go over this. The bipartisan group is proposing an extension of the moratorium of evictions, which provides protection against people who cannot afford to pay their rent. At the same time, Cassidy said they wanna protect landlords as well. Bingo. Cassidy said one of the sticking points in negotiations over the bill is liability protections for small businesses that would allow them to be open without worrying that they will be sued by customers who contract the virus. There has to be some liability protection, Cassidy said, citing mixed messages early on about the need for customers and employees to wear masks. The senator said he is confident that Trump and McConnell will accept the compromised relief package, which he believes is urgently needed. The pain of the American people is driving this, and I'm optimistic that both those leaders will come on board, he said. Very interesting. I want to go ahead. You guys know me. I have the whole interview pulled up, and then I have notes because I want to go over this. He's talking about actually giving landlords money. So it wouldn't just be an eviction moratorium, meaning that, well, you know, you owe money, but you can stay here. It would be that people are actually getting the rent 
paid. Let's go ahead and let's take a look and see what he has to say. After months of failed negotiations, there are signs of a possible compromise on, on coronavirus relief. A bipartisan group of senators is pushing a $908 billion package that would boost unemployment benefits by $300 a week, provide $288 billion for struggling small businesses, and $160 billion for state and local governments. Joining us now, Republican Senator Bill Cassidy, who's a doctor, as well as a member of the bipartisan group behind the plan. Senator, what are the chances that Congress will pass this compromise plan that your bipartisan group has come up with? And I guess more specifically, have you been, how assured are you that Senate Majority Leader McConnell will support it and that President Trump will sign it? President Trump has indicated that he would sign a $908 billion package. There's only one $908 billion package out there, that's ours. Leader McConnell has said he's not interested in making a point. He wants something which passes into law. It only can pass into law if it's bipartisan in the House and the Senate, and ours is. Now, neither have said, oh, we'll sign your bill. That's fair. We have final language. Our final language, Chris, will probably come out early this week, earlier this week. Uh, and so then people can look at it, and we can modify it as needed. But the indications I get, the pain of the American people is driving this, and I'm optimistic that both those leaders will come on board. Let's do a lightning round, quick questions, quick answers, and some of the specifics about the legislation. Some members of your group and also outside your group are calling for another round of $1,200 direct payments to every adult American. Is that go or no go for you? Um, this is a, let me nuance that. It may be a go, but it's not in this bill. This is not a stimulus bill, it is a relief bill. And it's something for the next three to four months to help those in greatest need. There may be a stimulus check, but that would be part of a different piece of legislation. Will the moratorium on evictions be extended? We do extend that, but we also bring relief to the landlords. They're the ones holding the bag. And so we're, we're, we're giving relief to the landlords on the condition that the person not be evicted. We do think we get there. Now, Democrats have made it clear, not in your group, but generally, that they oppose liability protection for businesses that reopened during the pandemic. Is that non-negotiable for Republicans? Does that have to be in the bill? Define non-negotiable. There has to be some, there has to be some liability protection. Think about it. At first, CDC and Dr. Fauci were saying, don't wear a mask. And then they were saying, wear a mask. And so there's been ambiguity as we have gone through. And then think of that small restaurant when people were told not to wear a mask, and now someone's going to file a claim. Just the discovery would make them bankrupt. So we've got to have something, but it has to be something that we negotiate that's acceptable to both. And frankly, that's one of the sticking points right now. President-elect Biden says he supports this compromise that you and the others are offering as a, quote, down payment, but that he fully intends to come back after he's inaugurated in 2021 and asked for more. Take a look at what he said. Americans need help, and they need it now. And they need more to come early next year. Do you agree that Washington will need to pass more stimulus, more relief in 2021 to help prop up the economy? Hey, tell me what the vaccine uptake is. Tell me what the infection rate is. If the vaccine is being deployed, infection rates are falling, stores are reopening, small businesses are flourishing, we don't. But if the infection rate continues to climb, we may. So you have to kind of give me the variables upon which I'm deciding. I'm hoping that vaccine deployment begins to reopen things as infection rates fall. I want to change subjects on you. You are one of the few Republicans in the Senate to openly state that Joe Biden won this election and is the next president. I want to play a clip from President Trump in his rally in Georgia last night. Take a look, sir. They cheated and they rigged our presidential election, but we will still win it. We will still win it. Does the president's refusal to accept the election results more than a month afterwards 
Does that damage our democracy, sir? First, let me say that, that the president, in effect, has conceded when he ordered the General Service Administration to begin the transition. And so if by damage in our democracy you mean that the uh, next administration won't be prepared, that preparation is taking place. Now, if you want to speak about how things are undermined, I think the president, by the way, if there's fraud, it should be uncovered. But it should be uncovered in a way which a judge agrees. If the president's able to show that, then that's important. If they can't show, that's also important. I'm, I'm hoping the American people would look and say, huh, yeah, proven in a court of law? No, the court of law threw it out and use that to base their faith in how the elections go. Um, and so that's the, it's incumbent upon the president and his legal team to establish that. But you've come to the conclusion, and you talk about the fact that all of these cases that his team has offered have been thrown out. You've come to the conclusion that Joe Biden has won, uh, you know, it, it, even though there are more cases out there. Does it hurt, do you feel, the fact that you, the, the, the vast majority of your Republican colleagues in the Senate refuse to accept the results of the election? Does that undercut, undermine the election, not in the sense that there are transition meetings, but that it means that millions of people may never accept Joe Biden as the legitimate president. You're giving me a hypothetical, and I can't, I can't tell you what millions of people are going to do. All I can say is that we are one nation, um, and many we become one. And so at the end of this, if the legal challenges are exhausted, ideal, and, and by the way, and if, they're, and if it goes as it currently is going, which appears likely, then ideally the American people say, hey, we're first Americans, let's work together for the future of our country, as opposed to continue to harbor grievances. We don't want to be uh, a nation which uh, fights another nation for a thousand years. We want to recognize that we are the American people, and we are going to work for each other. And yes, have your day in court. And if it's fraud, uncover that fraud. And if not, we move on. That's where we are. I'm hopeful that we would move on whichever direction that falls out. Finally, Congress is expected to pass the Defense Authorization Act this week and send it on to the president. But President Trump says he intends to veto it unless it strikes uh, Section 230 of the Communications Act, which provides protection for tech giants like Facebook and Twitter. If the president, and he has said he's going to veto it, if he does, will you vote to override that veto? Um, we need to pay our troops. We need, we need defense. And so uh, my inclination would be to always vote for the troops and to vote for our national security, but to look for another vehicle to address the, 230, uh, the, the Section 230 issues that are so important to the president. And very quickly, do you think that your Senate colleagues will agree with you that, yes, they'll go for another vehicle, but if the president vetoes the Defense Authorization Act, the money for the troops, as you said, that they'll vote to override? I haven't done a whip count, but we all recognize the world's an increasingly dangerous place. And God bless the members of our military and our clandestine services. We need to support them as they protect us. Um, but I haven't done a whip count. But I do think there's an incredible respect for the men and women who protect our country, and we recognize our need to support them. Get my notes. Let's go. So this is Chris Wallace says, he says, after months of filed negotiations, there were signs of compromise on a relief bill. The Problem Solvers Caucus is pushing a $908 billion package that would boost unemployment by 300 a week, provide $288 billion on struggling small businesses, and $160 billion on state and local. Bill Cassidy, doctor, and he's a senator and a member of the Problem Solvers Caucus. What are the chances Congress will pass this compromise plan and that your group has come up with? And how assured are you that McConnell and Trump will actually get on board and sign it? Because it's another thing. We can get excited about this all we want, but they haven't necessarily said they're going to sign it. So here we go. It says, Trump has indicated he will sign it. And there is only one package out there that's $908 billion, and that's what he said he would sign. McConnell said he doesn't want something to pass just to make a point, but he wants something to become law. This can only become law if it's bipartisan, the House and Senate. Our final language will come out earlier this week on the bill, and we are looking at modifying it as needed. The pain the American people are feeling is driving this, and I'm optimistic that the leaders will come on board. Sounds good so far. And it says on legislation, 
Some members of your group and outside your group are calling for $1,200 stimulus payments. Is that a go for you or a no-go? He says, it may be a go, but not in this bill. This isn't stimulus, this is relief. This will help those in three to four months for the greatest need. Not, uh, he says that will be part of a different legislation. So he is saying in this legislation, there are no stimulus checks. Now, that doesn't mean we aren't getting stimulus checks with this bill. As Pelosi and Schumer said, this bill is a starting point for negotiations. Remember, it's just a starting point. So that means there's tons of room for this to grow and it could possibly be added in there. It is looking a little bit less and less likely as time goes on. It looks like that may come with the next package, but it could happen. So he says, will eviction moratorium be extended? He says we will, but relief will also go to the landlords too. And that, and then the condition will be you can't evict people to get that relief. This is fantastic because with the eviction moratorium, it ends up screwing over the landlords. That's what it does. Now, hopefully the landlords have been doing this long enough. They have money in place, but some don't. So what do you do with that? So it looks like they're saying we're going to end up helping the landlords, which in that case, I'm wondering, does that mean, because with our eviction moratorium right now, depending on the state and on the situations and lawyers and you know laws you have argued in your area, you technically aren't supposed to get kicked out right now. However, you still owe all that money, all that money in rent you still owe. So this would ensure, it sounds like from what they're saying, that the landlords would get, the, they would actually get the rent money, which means we wouldn't have to owe money because it's not going to be crap. What if you lost your job in February or March and you haven't been able to work and now you owe $10,000 in rent payments? And that's something we've all been looking at and trying to talk about and figure out because in some type of bill, they're going to have to do something to help rent in this regard. It's too much of a price tag to have over people's heads in a situation that wasn't their fault. It's not fair to landlords, it's not fair to the tenants. So this very excited to see in there. And so it says, Democrats have made it clear, generally, they oppose the liability protections for businesses um, that reopen. Is that non-negotiable? Does it have to be in the bill? I mean, you guys know the liability protections are, if somebody goes into a business or they work in a business and they get sick, they can't sue the place. I unfortunately see both sides of this equation. We know business unregulated will go crazy and they don't care if they kill people. Look at what they've done in third world countries when they move over there. Like they've done horrible things to those people. And they've also done horrible things to the people here. But businesses have to know they can reopen without having nonstop lawsuits. So again, there's a middle ground. The middle ground is everybody stop being a-holes. And it just seems like it takes so much to get the government to that point. So he says, um, he says, define non-negotiable. There has to be some liability protections. At first they said no masks and now we wear masks. He's talking about like Fauci. And remember in the very beginning, they said, don't wear masks. In fact, they were like, save that for the people who need the PPE. And now it's nonstop masks. He says, there's been some ambigu ambigu ah, ambiguity. I couldn't say it. There's been some ambiguity going on. I'm glad he pointed it out because not, not, not enough people point that out, that how changing this situation is right now. He says, now being told not to wear a mask and someone went into a restaurant and they weren't wearing one and the business gets sued, they fold. Just the fact that anybody discovers that they made a claim, you know, a legal claim would have them bankrupt. We need something, but something negotiated and acceptable to both. But this is a sticking point. So he says, Biden says he supports this compromise and everyone is offering as a down payment, but he intends to come back in 2021 and ask for more. Biden. And this is what Biden said. Biden had said Americans need help. They need it now. They need it next year. He says, do you agree with Washington? We will need to pass more relief to help prop up the economy. He says, tell me what the infection rate is, the vaccine uptake. If businesses are flourishing, illness is going down, vaccines are going out, then we won't. Give me variables on what we are trying to decide. We hope infection rates will continue to fall with the vaccine. Honestly, I think that's a very Republican half glass full answer. I think that we have so much damage to our economy and to us personally, we're going to need another bill. We're going to need help for a while. You know, remember, we're now in December. Did we really think, remember December last year when we heard that this was happening in China, we saw the viral videos of people and they were starting to be uh, quarantined and they were like off their balconies singing and yelling at each other and having, and, and, you know, trying to keep each other going. Did we really think at that time all this would happen this year? And let's go a step further. In March, did we think in December we'd be in this position? We're in a worse position now. So for them to be, act like, it, it feels like an insult for me 
to hear them continue to go, wait and see. It feels like this is a complete slap in the face from these people. Okay, so he ends up saying, you are one of the few Republicans that openly states that Biden won the election and Biden is the next president. I'm just going to touch on this because this whole subject irritates me. He says, I want to play a clip from you from Trump last night. And Trump's going, they cheated, they rigged it, but we will still win. He says, does the president's refusal to accept the results, does that damage our democracy? Does it damage our democracy to make sure that our elections are fair? Does it damage our democracy to make sure that we're keeping things in place so democracy isn't damaged? Really? Really? This, this makes me mad. <laughs> and by the way, we haven't had democracy for a long time in this country. It's hanging on by just a few threads of illusion. And he says, he says, let me say the president in effect conceded in regard to allowing Biden to transition. If you mean that the next, in, that the next administration won't be prepared and that is hindering democracy, well, Trump is allowing that. He says, if you look at things, he says, if you want to talk about things undetermined and if there is fraud, it should be uncovered with a judge agreeing. The president needs to show that. And if he can show that, then it's a proven. He says, I hope the American people can see where this is going and have faith in our elections. It's incumbent that the president and his legal team, he's like, or he says, it's important that the president and his legal team establish that if that's the case. I think this is a decent answer to an extent, but... I hate that he's like, the American people need to have faith in their elections. Don't we have a separation of church and state for a reason? And by the way, I'm a very spiritual person. I'm all about faith, right? Not even religious, just my own form of how I look at faith in terms of having an inner knowing that everything happens for a reason and trying to find the, the higher purpose, the greater good for something if I can. Not telling y'all how to live. These are the tools I use to navigate this crazy earth that we're on. This is just what helps me and brings me peace. But... I think we shouldn't have faith in our system because our system has been so broken and filled with liars and creepy people for so long. Should we have blind faith in the creeps that are still there? Or should we challenge and make sure things are running smoothly? Seeing so many Republicans jump ship with this, it makes me question how many people in the government are actually scared of men named Jeff that have airplanes. That's all, all sides. You think your side is better? <laughs> They're not. He says, but you've come to the conclusion that Biden has won with all the cases being thrown out, even though more cases are out there. Do you feel it hurts your, do you feel it hurts with your Republican colleagues that they won't accept this election, that millions may never accept Joe Biden as the next president? I feel like that question gives us insight into the people, the creepy people at the top we don't know about who pull all the strings and what they're concerned about. I think they're concerned we're not actually going to accept Joe Biden. And maybe if they all weren't so absolutely creepy and shady and sneaky and doing horrible things all the time behind the scenes to women, minorities, children across the country and the world, maybe it wouldn't be looked at that way. So to me, it's their fault. If people don't accept that it's because you guys continue to have a government run in this way so that we can't accept what you say. I'm not saying what you should or shouldn't do. I'm telling you how I look at this just based off of common sense. You guys know when my movement get like quicker and they get more like staccatoed and stagnated that like I'm getting more irritated. <laughs> These people irritate me. So then he says, you're giving me a hypothetical. I can't tell you what millions will do in our nation. At the end of this, um, he says, if the legal challenges are exhausted and if it goes where it's going, ideally, the American people will say, hey, we are first Americans and we want to work together and not harbor grievances. We don't want a nation that fights with itself or a nation that fights a nation for a thousand years. We're Americans. We want to be able to work for one another. If it's fraud, uncover that fraud. And if not, then we go forward in whichever direction is needed. Side note, if Americans want to work for one another, we need to get on board with demanding we all have better health care options and more and better ways of existing healthier in this country, i.e. our food and water isn't poisoned by heavy metals and chemicals nonstop. So then, last thing, Congress is expected to pass a defense authorization bill this week, and it will be passed on to Trump. And Trump says he will veto it unless it strikes two third, the 230 um, Act. He says which provides protections for the 230 Communications Act, which provides protections for tech giants like Facebook and Twitter. He says he will... And if he does, are you going to override that veto? I don't know much about this bill. I'll tell you this right now. I will tell you 
If not knowing much about this, I'm going to lean more on the side of Trump on this. And let me tell you why. I'm going to lean more on his side with what is being said because the tech giants have gotten away with killing free speech for too long. I don't want to go too far into this, but some of the argument with that when it comes to really this, you even hear me talk about censorship on here. When it comes to the censorship, here are some of the arguments when it comes to this. They are privately owned, privately run businesses. And as a result, they can make up their own rules and how they want to conduct. But how far can they go to actually go against the Constitution of the United States? There are several things at play here. So I'm going to err more on the side that I would trust Trump with this than knowing what's going on. But fair warning, I don't know what's going on fully with this. I just know some of the issues that have been talked about. And so he says, we need to pay our troops and pay our defense. I will always vote for defense and troops, but we'll look for another vehicle when it comes to those 230 appropriations for the president. Last thing he says, do you think the Senate colleagues will agree with you and that they will vote to override it? He says, we know the world's an increasingly bad place. God bless the military and the clandestine services. Amen. We should support them as they help us. There's an incredible respect for the women and men of this country and we need to support them. So what have we learned from this? We've learned that it looks like they're actually going to be helping landlords. So you might not have to pay that rent back at all. And here's the big thing I wanted to talk about. I said I was going to start talking about and I will start getting some information together. The deadline that we know is December 11th. Looks like it's being pushed back to December 18th. It looks like a government is going to be open, stay in sessions longer to get this passed, which is fantastic. This only gave us this week to get our you know what together or them to get their you know what together and try to pass something. But now, now that we have something that's really got momentum, it looks like we're going to have one more week. We have two more weeks to be able to get this passed. So this week, legislation will be finalized and crafted from the Problem Solvers Caucus. And hopefully, fingers crossed, by, by the middle or end of this week, we'll have that legislation. We will have it be voted on. And let's pray that we get something that can help us somewhere. Okay, guys, if you like this video, please help me out and give me a big thumbs up. Like this video, subscribe, hit notifications so you can be notified what's coming to the pipeline for you and your stimulus money. Also, guys, sound off in the comments. I want to hear everything y'all have to say. And please share this content with as many people as you know they're struggling right now. People who are on unemployment, waiting for employment, stimulus checks, SB loan and grant issues, and everything in between. I've got tons of tools and tons of resources to help you during this very difficult time. And I would love nothing more than to do just that. And guys, if you want more one-on-one -on -one stimulus help in your individual areas, then please make sure and go to my Facebook page and like the page, Katie's Insight. Go to our Facebook group, Katie's Corner. will be changed to Katie's Insight soon. Ask all the stimulus questions you want. Ask about your specific area this week. I'm going to try to put together a spreadsheet of exactly where stimulus help is in different states, in different areas across the country where rental help is, so you guys can apply and get the help you need. Stay tuned for that. I'm going to work on that because I care about y'all, and I want to see if we can get you as much help as possible. Okay, guys, I'm going to get ready for the next videos because we have more and more information coming out. I want to make sure that you guys have everything you need going forward to be able to have the help that you need, and I'll keep you up to date to do just that. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'm so grateful and I'm so blessed to every single one of you every day that you allow me to do this. You give my life meaning, you give it purpose, and I will work every day towards helping you guys to the best of my ability. All right, guys, hugs and kisses.